Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Hop, TFB TV's designated cheapskate. I'm out here shooting one of the cheapest guns that I own, which for me is definitely saying something. So, let's say you're in the market for a good all around handgun for concealed carry, range days, and home defense. Obviously, you want a Glock 19. But let's say you can't afford a Glock 19. For the sake of argument, let's say you can't afford a cheaper competitor like a Ruger Security 9. That's where this comes in. This is a Smith & Wesson Sigma SW9VE that I bought for 185 bucks, which in other words is high point money. Definitely somebody in the comments is going to say they once bought a high point for $100. I don't know what kind of backwoods redneck meth peddling gun shop sold you a high point for $100, but around here, if you buy a handgun for 100 bucks, it probably doesn't come with a serial number. Welcome to Hops Budget Blasters. So what do you get for 185 bucks? Quite a lot, actually. The SW9VE is a modern, polymer-framed, striker-fired, double-stack combat pistol with a rail... kinda? The VE designation stands for Value Enhanced. The value side of the equation is pretty self-evident, as are the enhancements over previous generations of the Sigma. VEs have improved grip texture, which is a nice feature since the original Sigmas were made out of Super Soaker plastic. They have a loaded chamber indicator in the form of a witness hole on top of the barrel hood, a feature that was carried forward to the current M&P pistols. And lastly, they have a proprietary rail, which doesn't fit any accessories on the market. Proprietary handgun rails were the onion on the belt of the late 90s when the VE Sigmas were introduced. The third generation Glocks were brand new at the time and had a proprietary Glock rail. Sig had introduced the Sig Pro in 1998 with a very handsome but also proprietary Sig rail, and HK beat them to the punch in 1993 with the USP that also had a proprietary rail. This all happened before Picatinny won the format war, even though Glock still likes to pretend they didn't notice. The 9VE is right between a Glock 19 and Glock 17 in size, and so is the magazine capacity. Standard mags are 16 rounds, but you can use the 17 rounder from an older full-size Sigma. It just has a larger base plate. My Sigma came with one post-AWB 16 rounder, and I picked up a 10 round magazine and a 17 round magazine from the bin of random gun crap at the local pawn shop. It even came with the original case, which is covered in dirt from somebody's shed and has foam with no cutout for the pistol to sit in. Value. The Sigma VE was also available in 40 Smith & Wesson, which you might be able to find even cheaper than my 9mm example. The 40 cal pistols had a standard magazine capacity of 14 rounds, down one size from the full-size Sigmas in 40. I got my Sigma lightly used and have probably about 500 rounds through it since then of mixed cheapo brass and aluminum cased ammo, plus a few mags of Herder's TNJ and Federal Syntec that I had to use up. It's been reliable for me and I have not been nice to it. Got him. While we're on the subject of bullets, effortless segue, big thanks to Ventura Munitions for sponsoring TFB TV and providing ammunition. They've got all kinds of specialty ammunition, or if you're like me and mostly just shoot Sigmas and Taurus, they also have bulk ammo. Check them out if you need something special, or just need to feed the addiction. On the inside, the Sigma is just a Glock. The similarities are so striking and thorough that Smith & Wesson got sued by Glock and settled. Since Smith & Wesson were apparently determined to rip off as much of the Glock as they thought they could get away with, it's a shame they didn't rip off the trigger as well. If you pick up a Sigma and dry fire it, you'll absolutely hate the trigger. The pole is long and heavy, and the reset is all the way out at the start of travel. It feels a lot like a true double action trigger, even though the Sigma has a pre-cocked striker like a Glock and no restrike capability. Actually shooting it though, it's not that bad. The faster you shoot, the less noticeable the weight, pull length, and stacking are. It's a lot like shooting a double action revolver at speed. I got used to the Sigma trigger very quickly, but I still can't shoot it as fast as a Glock, and it makes my arms tired. I tried mag dumping the Sigma a few times, and about halfway through the magazine I got tired, and hungry, and bored, and had to stop for a granola bar. If you find yourself with a Sigma you can't get rid of, you can get a trigger spring kit from Apex, which lightens the pull and makes the gun more shootable. I have one of those kits in my older 40 cal full-size Sigma, and it does shoot better than stock. I haven't done the upgrade to the SW9VE, and I'm not going to. In standard configuration, the Sigmas do have some features Glock haters will appreciate. The girth and angle of the grip on Sigmas is really comfortable. It hardly feels like shooting a 2x4 at all. The stock sights are also standard metal 3-dot sights. I know some people don't like playing the ball in the cup game when shooting Glocks. I don't honestly care either way. The slide release and magazine release of the Sigma are not ambidextrous, but that was considered normal in the 90s, unlike left-handed people. Like on a Glock, the slide release is just a little scrap of sheet metal, but it's longer and a bit easier to hit. I kept riding it with my thumb because I'm used to shooting Glocks, but you get used to it. Most Smith & Wesson polymer-framed guns, including the Sigma and the newer M&P series, have a slide auto-forwarding feature, where the slide drops if you insert a loaded magazine firmly enough. 
I'm pretty sure this is a design flaw that they have cleverly rebranded as a feature, but I do not care for it. In my experience, you can't rely on the slide to drop 100% of the time, which means you should probably not expect it to, and just practice using the slide release like a normal person. The Sigma series shoots like a Glock, which makes sense because from a legal standpoint it basically is one. I think they're more comfortable than Glocks thanks to the grip angle and lack of finger grooves, and they also point more naturally than Glocks, at least for me. Recoil control and follow-up shots are no problem because it's a medium-sized 9mm. If you find the recoil of 9mm is too much to handle, try eating a cheeseburger. In addition to looking and handling like a Glock, the Sigma also takes down like a Glock. Clear the gun, pull the trigger to drop the striker, retract the slide a bit, pull down the tabs on the sides of the frame, and slide that slide off. If you disassemble one of these next to a Glock, be very careful that you put the parts back in the same gun you took them out of. Internet rumor says you might be able to use 40 caliber Glock barrels in the 40 caliber Sigmas, but I can't confirm that and I doubt it works the same way with the 9mm guns. The aftermarket for the Sigma pistols is similar to the aftermarket for current production value handguns. The Ruger Security 9, Taurus TH9, and other similar guns do not have the aftermarket support of any 9mm Glock and never will. Sigmas are similar. You can still buy spare mags for these from most major gun parts suppliers and you can buy aftermarket night sights. If you want to run a tactical light on a VE Sigma, you can still buy adapters for the proprietary rail, which is hokey but acceptable in a pinch. The biggest obstacle to carrying a Sigma might be holster compatibility. You can definitely find one, but you're not going to have nearly the same breadth of options as you would with a Glock. Now we have to ask ourselves the hard question. Do you save enough money buying one of these old Sigmas to make it worthwhile versus a newer Glock competitor? I'm going to say... maybe. Bold statement, I know. Each of my Sigmas cost right around 200 bucks, which is about 100 bucks less than a new Security 9, Taurus TH9, or even Smith & Wesson's own SD series that replaced the Sigma. All you lose by going with an old Sigma is a Picatinny compatible rail, but I have yet to meet anyone who carries a gun with a weapon light on it. I think that might just be an Instagram thing. Hell, the Sigmas are usually even cheaper than the old Ruger P-Series pistols, and as much as I love my Ruger p series the Sigma makes them look like antiques. Alright, what's the takeaway? If you have the opportunity to buy one of these, and instead you get a high point for the same money, you're an idiot. The Smith & Wesson Sigma pistols are solid Glock knockoffs for the money. An SW9VE will do almost everything a Glock 19 will for about half the cost, provided you can get use of that trigger. And I think that you can. I believe in you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.